just 12 months ago. All of this was a twice yearly ploughed field. And now we have this 32 permanent bed garden. And in this video, I want to look at how and why we moved to this setup. Welcome back friends. Welcome back to the homestead. This video is a bit different. Um, this video has been filmed over the last 12 months and it's um, documented our journey uh, with this 32 permanent bed or market garden type garden for growing our food. Of course the first year is always the hardest um, but it's for the longer term. We're looking at the bigger picture. Of course there's a lot of history and I, I do want to pick up some of that history in this video. But where do we start? I think the best place to start is with the soil. And I mean this stuff in the ground. Because soil is the protagonist in this story. It's the main character, the lead role. It's all about soil. And excuse me if I said it more than once, um, because I probably will. You see, during the time I was um, learning about this life change, um, which I've documented in other videos, I realised, or came to the conclusion, that it was all about the soil. It wasn't about the quality of seeds that we might get, or the variety. It wasn't about, although that has something to do with that, I guess, it wasn't about the machinery that we could get, the tractor or, or other things. And it wasn't about the manure we could get, or the fertiliser. We've always grown organically here, that, that's never changed. Um, it was about the soil, and so I had to approach it from the point of view of the soil. I realised that if we looked after the soil, the soil would look after us, and that became then the focus, it became the centre. And the ongoing research became about uh, finding a method to grow food which looked after cared for the soil and we um, sort of lived by our commitment to be stewards of the land, stewards of the earth. And I think what we need to do next is to look at the history of, of where we are, how stuff's been growing and which will then bring us up to the point where um, I think with other things going on I decided that um, we had to change and we had to um, dive in at the deep end, as it were, um, with our change and commit to building what we've got here. So let's look at that. So this is my father-in-law's father. -in -law's father. Um, he built the house that we currently live in back in the 30s and uh, they grew lots of vegetables here as well and um, also a lot of hay. Um, here we can see a picture from outside the barn taken during the war time um, and actually my father-in-law is the small child at the front there and of course you know how it looks now. Here's the, the other barn, you can see there was a hay field there and now it's rather overgrown with trees. And here's the house as it was back in the 70s and, and now with a, a, a new roof as well. And here's the front of the house and you can see that there was a field there as well where vegetables are grown. We've now got our no dig potatoes. And this is just in front of the permanent bed field of what this video is about. So more recently, here's the field four years ago. And you can see my daughter there, she's two in this picture. And this is the field that's been tilled twice a year. And the result of that is some pretty poor soil, very sandy. I sort of call it moon dust. This is the tractor that um, used to come and the tractor um, makes these furrows which were planted into which I'll look at in deeper in the next part and you can see the soil is very dusty there and lots of weeds and um, this is a time lapse of uh, myself and Gita um, we were cultivating the potato rows and this was really hard work um, back breaking um, it looks easy in the time lapse obviously and I was told that we were going to have to do this several times and I just thought this is crazy there's got to be a better way to grow food. Okay, so let's look at an animation where I look in greater detail how and why we changed our garden. So normally, twice a year, 
tractor comes and ploughs once in the autumn and once in the spring. And then soon after that, the tractor comes back and makes the heaped furrows, which we would then plant into. These are spaced about 50 centimetres peak to peak and are roughly 25 centimetres deep. You plant only in the top of the furrow, which leaves the sides and the trough exposed. So what's the problem with this? Well, there is one advantage, and that is that the tractor comes and does the hard work, but that's pretty much where the advantages end. You see, the problem is that this leaves a lot of exposed soil that can't be used to plant into, so it's inefficient and in addition, it's very destructive to the soil in terms of its structure and biology. Let's explore the problems closer. The soil that isn't planted into is exposed to the sun, and so a lot of evaporation occurs, and it's exposed to the rain, so there's potential for a lot of soil to be washed away, especially our soil, as it's very sandy. So, biology. Well, the importance of soil biology was only discovered in the 80s, and so it's fairly new to the grand scale of things. It's incredibly complex and requires its own video, so here I'll keep it short. When I talk about biology, I'm talking about the food web. That's everything from earthworms, bugs and the like, down to tiny microscopic bacteria and fungi. They all work together as a team to bring nutrients and minerals to plants, making healthy plants for healthy humans. But if the soil is constantly tilled and forked, it doesn't happen. More of that in another video sometime. And then there's weeds. Someone once said that the earth is modest and if you don't cover her, she will cover herself. Weeds will grow anywhere where there's exposed soil and half decent growing conditions. Our climate is perfect for weeds. So what's the alternative? Well, we need to minimise evaporation and we need to minimise movement of the soil and of course weeds whilst maximising growing space and still giving us easy access to all areas. But how? Well, the answer is totally rethinking the way that we grow and move to a permanent bed layout, much like market gardens, and only doing it once. This is how it works. We make beds that are 75 centimetres wide and 10 metres long. On each side of the bed is a 30 centimetre wide walkway, which is covered in wood chips. These lock in the moisture and lock out weeds. With these wider beds, you can sow or transplant multiple rows of your crop closer together and so they provide a living leaf mulch cover over the bed, thus lessening the effects of evaporation and discouraging weeds to grow. When it comes to the end of the season, these beds aren't tilled or dug over because we want the soil to remain healthy and alive. And instead, we cover the beds with a compost mulch which protects them until spring and feeds the soil with nutrients. So let's now look at the design for this new garden and we can delve a bit deeper into the numbers. So here we've got the old field basically where it was ploughed and, and furrowed and each of the brown lines here um, in the flashing red square represents the peak of one of the troughs. Of course you can only plant in really the sort of 10 centimetres uh, wide peak so just looking at the numbers there, you can see that this field gives us about 260 square metres, which is, I don't know, 2,500, 600 square feet. 14 rows, furrows, and gives us a planting area of 52 square metres and exposed ground of 210 square metres. So quite a lot of the soil, the ground, can't be used for planting in because it's either the edge of the furrow or it's what we walk on in between the furrows. So let's look at what we have built. We've got here the beds um, in the layout that you would have seen in previous videos. The difference with this is because all the beds are flat, of course all the areas in between we cover with wood chips so any soil that's required for walkways um, they're covered in wood chips so all the exposed soil is, is covered and of course it's permanent so it doesn't need moving at all. And you can see the difference there in um, with the figures which now appear at the top there. Um, the growing area of this permanent bed system is nearly as big as the unusable uh, ground of the previous system. So um, we're growing in sort of, we've got 
three times the growing area or more than three times from the previous system and it's you know a huge gain really on the area and of course because the beds are permanent we can then obviously we can succession crop as well so we can have you know two or three things planted from from early in the year middle of the year and then later in the year through winter so that gives you kind of an idea of the figures and the numbers that we're looking at in terms of the of the plan so if i just overlay a, a drone picture of the garden you can see that um that it fits over the top quite neatly the only difference here really is that we haven't built the seventh bed on the three rows although actually the first one we planted with clover as a cover crop and that's now um, watered down and, and succumbed to frost and um, will decompose over the winter so that's the um, the garden plan as it were you can see the layout and the numbers um, let's now actually watch the build as it were take place and i can uh, talk you through what's going on there so here we are uh, october last year and i'm just preparing what will become the um, big roof stout no dig potato beds and i'm just i've just dragged some leaves together really which i'm just putting out on these two beds you can see the field still plowed at this point nothing's been touched so here we are now uh, february next year and uh, we've got ourselves a chipper and we're making all the chips for the pass and here we are here i am making the first path so you can see that because we didn't have enough compost to build up the beds um, we weren't in a position to be able to source it either i don't think there's even anywhere in latvia that would, would supply it um, we had to dig down into the beds to make them um, and i managed to get a spade a uh, shovel which is exactly the right size for these paths and here we can see there it's finished and here we are with the next set of um, six beds finished as well uh, towards the end of the month all looking good and so april came and we were able to start planting possibly a little bit late but you know we have quite a long hard winter here and uh, we started with some onions and peas i think i'd already planted at this stage and um, we all got out there and uh, got our fingers in the ground as it were so as part of this journey i made my own custom tools i made some hose and i made the row maker which you've just seen me dragging along um, which worked really well as i was building the, the garden i was aware that um, constantly sort of behind me was stuff ready to be planted so sort of constantly just two steps ahead of what needs to be planted I think a race against time sounds a bit dramatic but it did feel like that at, at times of course um, now with what was going on in the world um, we were homeschooling our daughter and we couldn't really um, we had a lot of things that we had to get done and as well as getting this garden prepared so that we could grow some food. But our daughter was keen to help out and uh, join in as well. And you know, it's great, great life skills, great life experience for her. So we're about to, to make the third section now of, of beds. And that's what we're doing here. She was helping with the measuring out. And uh, standard market garden beds, um, 75 centimetres wide, 30 centimetres walkways. Maybe they're a little tight, they could have been a bit wider, but it, it, it's working okay for us. And uh, here I'm preparing the beds, taking that soil out um, through the walkways and putting it back onto the bed. You can see how it, I've mentioned already the sort of state of the soil. Um, so these, the top two beds of each row, we I felt in the end it would be best to cover with a plastic mulch. It's not ideal, but because it was fresh land and we knew that we weren't going to have a lot of time for weeding, um, we decided to cover them for this year with a plastic mulch. Uh, and, and that's worked out well, actually. And here we're rolling the uh, roll of hay over so that we can start making those roof stout beds. Um, you can see the dog was helping. And uh, again, the time lapse making it look effortless, but it was far from that. And then um, a couple of weeks later, we, we got to actually roll out the hay 
and make these really stout beds. You can see how um, interchangeable the weather was. One moment we're wearing coats and it's horrible. The next moment it's um, nice and warm. I've documented this roof stout method elsewhere, but essentially we're just planting into into hay or straw, and uh, we then don't have to dig the soil to grow the potatoes. It works really well, and you can see just to um, to the right of the picture the raw beans have started coming up, and then the peas are just in the background. So um, now I'm getting on with filling the walkways of the third section of beds. This is quite early in the morning actually. I um, chipped a load of wood chips the day before and uh, just getting them distributed out. At the moment um, you'll see there's a shot where it shows um, the garden um, with lots of things planted but very small. So we've got, you know, the onions are up, the peas are up, broad beans are up and the carrots are up, um, middle, left. That shovel worked really well actually for putting the same shovel that I used for cutting the walkways worked really well for distributing the wood chips. And we had wood chips from apple trees, pine trees, um, birch trees pr predominantly. So um, here's me just uh, making some lines to plant some stuff in, in the third section of beds. And here I am putting some transplants in. And you can see that last section of um, beds is still got the, it's still weeded at this time. So here I am trying to sort out this last top section and you can see me shoveling the, um, the native soil or the moon dust as I call it. And, uh, you know, this is a really great example of what we've been working with and what we're trying to regenerate back into healthy living soil. OK, so now most of the hard work is done. Let's take a look at the garden. important to point out that before this year I had no prior experience of gardening. I'd barely grown a carrot and I'd certainly never designed or built a garden. For me the desire to do better, to be more efficient, to be lean and of course the need to grow food, lots of it, and not kill myself in the process are all very strong motivators to change. I totally acknowledge that there are lots of systems and methods out there and that situational context is really important. I spent hundreds and hundreds of hours studying, watching videos, reading etc to see what was best for us in our situation and this is the result. It's a journey not a destination and this is just the first year. So it's now early December and as you've just seen um, the garden is finished and of course now it looks quite different because it's had a, we've had a um, dusting of snow, well, more than a dusting, we've had about 10 centimetres of snow We've managed to get the compost that we've made this year onto all the beds as a duvet. So going into next year, we know that that compost layer is already there and we can start building on those um, year by year now as we stick to our permanent beds. It's been an interesting journey, not just a physical change, but a change of hearts and minds. I think some minds still need convincing, if I'm honest. Um, I need to say thanks really before we close the video thanks to um, people who tirelessly make videos 
um, and I've learned um, how hard that is sometimes and put them up and they share their um, wisdom and their experience and they've got jobs to do as well and they put all this up on YouTube um, and my, people like myself and others can benefit from that. People like um, Josh Satin, Richard Perkins uh, and particularly Charles Downing who's uh, very gracious in his knowledge and uh, masses and masses of uh, wisdom and experience that he shares so people like myself can benefit. Um, thank you to those people. I'll put links below. Uh, I'm sure you know of them already but I'll put links below to, um, to their uh, channels and websites and um, I hope that as we make videos and uh, share our experiences that you will be able to maybe um, learn from them as well. So um, thanks for watching. If you like the video, give us a thumbs up. Um, please subscribe. We've got loads of great videos coming up. And um, please leave a comment, particularly if you've seen something that we could do better, um, then I'm really eager um, to hear about that. So yeah, um, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. So uh, bye for now.